What's going on YouTube? I'm Josh Shelton, driver for the 6129 TT spec truck. For those of you coming back to view us again, thanks for joining in, following our content. For those of you that are new here, I hope that you like the page. Today, we're gonna be tearing apart the TRX to do the suspension kit. Uh, we've got a full Kibbe Tech mid-travel kit going on this truck. We've got all of his rear link bars, upper and lower control arms, tie rod kit, and his sway bar end links that we're going to be throwing on this thing. We've also got a Fouts Motorsports rear diff cover that we're going to be putting on here. It's kind of a skid plate to protect the pinion back there. So we're going to get this truck torn apart. We'll start with the rear and then we'll disassemble the front and then we'll show you guys how everything kind of goes back together. Motorsports diff 
skid on here. You're gonna take out these six bolts or 10 millimeter. Slide those bolts out of the way, you put the diff cover on. And then there's a pinion brace that'll attach on the front side. So right now we're gonna get these 10 bolts out and then we'll just show you throwing the skid up here real quick. They include new hardware, so make sure you use the new hardware on this. The factory bolts aren't gonna be long enough to go through everything. little pinion brace that'll go up around on the other side uh, once I get it on there I'll take y'all around and show you all that side all right so as you can see we got a 16 millimeter bolt and a 16 millimeter nut back here on the back side washers on both sides you got this little pinion brace that goes over the top to hold this front end up and then we're gonna go around back to the back and get those other uh, skid plate bolts that hold the diff cover on Get those tight and got this wrapped up. I've got the drain pan here just in case anything was to leak, but you do not have to drain your rear diff. Uh, and you don't have to replace the seal as long as you take care to make sure not to knock any of that loose. Uh, make sure you don't have any leaks. All right, we got all those snubbed up. We're gonna get a torque wrench, tighten everything down to factory torque spec. And then this thing's wrapped up, so good and protected for anything that we throw at the sink. So to take the sway bar end link off, you got a 10 millimeter backup that's on the very end back there and then a 21 on the nut. You gotta hold the back up where it's gonna spin in that lower control arm. So you get that loose and you can take that off the lower control arm. Once you get this 21 millimeter nut off of here, you have to use a pickle fork or some sort of something to separate this ball joint from the spindle. Uh, on the driver side, we ended up having to heat the spindle up just a little bit, but be careful with that. You don't want to get that too hot. On the factory upper control arm, you'll have to take this little ball off for the level sensor. It's a 10 millimeter to get that out of there, and that'll transfer over to your new control arm. To pull the shock, there's three bolts up there on the top of the coil bucket. Uh, those are 16s, and then there's a 30 millimeter down here for the bottom of the shock. Get both of those out. And then on the front side of the control arm, there's a little sleeve that you've got to pull out in order to get the shock out of the lower control arm. So we'll show you that whenever we get to that. So if you stick a pry bar in right here, you can kind of pry that little sleeve out a little bit. And then the shock should come free and then you can pull that out of there. Next, we're going to take this tie rod off. It's a 21 millimeter bolt on the bottom side. And then you'll again need some sort of a pickle fork or something to take that out. If you're not replacing the tie rod, you need to be careful with that ball joint. But in our case, we're going to be putting Kibby's tie rod on here. So we've got new hardware. So not really that big of a deal if we tear that up. All right, so we're over on the passenger side of the truck. We're going to get the this new suspension installed over here. Um, after you get everything disassembled, the first thing you need to do, they provide a ring that bolts up in here into the upper shock mount. Uh, you need to bolt that ring in so that you can use a hole saw. It's a two and three quarter inch hole saw that you need to open this up. That's for the top of the king shock. So we're, we're going to get that drilled out now. And once we get that drilled out, we can go ahead and throw the shock in upper control arm. We'll change this tie rod out to the Kibby tie rod. And then we've got the lower control arms came in. So we're going to get those thrown in as well. Maybe some safety squints. Yeah. Are you gonna be smart this time? Yeah. Protect those eyeballs. Yeah. There's the piece that we cut out of the upper bucket. As you can see, it's pretty rough. That hole saw is just kind of like a guide. So once you get the majority of it cleaned out, you take that ring off and use a die grinder or Dremel or whatever you got and kind of clean up these edges and then spray paint it with some black paint or whatever you've got. We're probably gonna use steel it just cause we've got a bunch of it on hand. All right, so on the upper control arm, you've got to reuse the factory hardware. 
Um, I'd go ahead and put this in before the shock goes in. It's gonna be easier to tighten up just in case you've got to hold a backup. It does have a tab on it, but just in case that tab wants to get squirrely on you, I would go ahead and tighten this up before you throw the shock in there. Well, we got the suspension on here. We got it all buttoned up. We took it for its first rip, and man, this truck is amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see the finished product. It came out even better than we thought that this thing was going to. So looking forward to some future content. We're gonna take this thing out and see what she can really do out in the desert. So follow along. Hope to get some updated stuff out to you guys. We'll have some content following us through the exhaust. We'll also have some testing videos kind of comparing this to a stock TRX.